So the 18K PV, as some of you know, um, I installed it over there at my parents' house. Still working on building the spot I'm gonna put the solar on. I have a little bit of solar hooked up to it right now, not a ton. So it's still not a complete job. But some of you guys are wondering, since it's a partial backup, basically I put a sub panel in that I'm gonna power loads from, but it can also feed back to the main panel, you know, your grid input on the inverter. It'll feed back through that line, any extra solar that's coming in and power your loads in the main panel without exporting it and selling it back to your power company, you know, unless you have it set up that way. If you have an agreement with them, of course you can do that, but we don't have our setup that way. So it's just going back to the panel, have the CTs on the panel, that's gonna stop that from going back to the grid. And some people are wondering about my settings. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna talk about all the settings to get this thing set up, or to use your solar power, you know, to power your loads in your main panel. Going back through your partial home backup, your breaker that you got, your 70 amp breaker that's gonna be going from your main panel to the input grid side of your inverter. So I'm gonna start screen recording my computer. Basically all, all this is gonna be on the, the web-based app. Some of it you can do it, of course, on the mobile app, but we're just gonna go on the web-based version right now. So let's go ahead and get that thing started. And basically you're gonna wanna do a couple of things. So you're gonna go on monitor.eg4electronics.com. So I'm gonna go ahead and just basically start from the get-go. Let's go to the monitor. And then when you log, basically when you log onto your account, Basically, you're gonna log into your account and you can be able to see all your data, of course, on your monitor at your front. And just do all your settings. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to maintenance. And if you want something that can kind of walk you through this, you can go also go on uh, eg4electronics.com, look up the 18K under the knowledge base under downloads, and then go down under the 18K inverter. And there's a white paper that you can go and download. So you go in here and go to 18 kpv monitor system working modes white paper and download that pdf and it's going to work you through all the modes that you may want to use you know and how to set the stuff up and what each mode means to give you some more information so of course i did use this and i also use uh some of the eg4 techs when i was setting my stuff up when i needed help i just contacted them and they were able to help me out so you go over to maintenance and if we go over here to read and click on read, it's gonna tell you where all your settings currently are on your inverter. So I'll go ahead and scroll down and you know everything where you can see if it's disabled or enabled, what, however you got it set. And then also you're gonna to wanna to go and look at your working mode and it'll also tell you on that, you know, what's set. So you go to read again for working mode and it's going to tell you what you got in normal, what you got enabled, standby. And so we're going to go ahead and just go through all of these and show you how I got it set. So we'll go ahead and start with a working mode since I'm already on there. And basically going to scroll down. If you need to set your time, you're right here at the top of the device, you'll be able to set your time. You know, I know I, de I definitely had a problem with my time not being right. And I didn't realize you can go over to working mode, you know, and click on it. So, you know, it took me a little while to figure that out. Uh, once I started talking to the EG4 techs. But you go up there, you can change your time. And then your basic stuff, the way I have mine set up for my parents is normal standby is in just normal. You know, so that mode basically, you know, it's going to be used to set the system in a standby mode, stop feeding in, charging and discharging. You know, normal is set when the whole, you want the whole thing to run basically in auto. Uh, then I got power backup enabled for the EPS output. And basically what that's going to do, it enables this mode Basically your EPS will be uninterruptible. Let's say the grid power, or whatever goes down, instead of that thing shutting down your inverter, it's just gonna use your battery backup to power your partial backup load panel. And then EPS switching, I got it disabled, no batteries, that's disabled. Um, off grid mode, disabled. Uh, grid loss warning is disabled. Um, Let's see, grid sell back. I got that disabled because I'm not selling back to the grid. So that's very important. You don't want to have that set if you're not uh, able to sell back to the grid because you don't have, you know, your correct permits and your authorization from your company, your power company to sell back. So, you know, just make sure you have all that stuff set right before you actually have everything on. And then the fast zero export, you're going to, you're going to want to have that enabled because if it's not enabled, you might accidentally sell back a little bit. So, you know, you want that thing to stop as fast as possible so it's not selling back to the grid inadvertently. 
And then also another thing is some people may be trying to put their CTs when they do their install right in your inverter itself, you know, right at the connection for your inverter to grid input. You're gonna to wanna to put that back in your main panel where your grid power is coming to your main house panel because that's where it's gonna be reading what's coming in and what would potentially be going out to keep it from selling back. So that's where I have mine set. I just ran it back into my parents' main grid panel, put on your, you know, your L1 and L2 in there and you're gonna be good to go. And then we're gonna scroll down to working mode. And as you can see, it's saying I'm in self-consumption mode. So, you know, you just pick whichever mode you wanna be in. I'm in self-consumption because that's the one that's green highlighted at the top. And it's pretty much gonna automate everything. So it tries to run everything off of solar when it can. And then the next, and if you go look, we can go look on a white paper and it'll just discuss this. See right here, self-consumption mode. So it's a station will default to self-consumption mode. So it's just the default. So the order priority for powering loads is solar, then battery, then the grid. And the order of priority for solar power is the load, the battery, and then the grid, which creates an ideal scenario when trying to utilize, you know, all the solar power you can over other types of power. So if you need grid power, it'll use it, you know, and you can set your different settings for your battery, how low you want your battery to go, if you want your battery to charge back from the grid, all those are settings that you can be able to do and prioritize whatever you feel like you need to do. So let's go back over to the working mode. Of course, I, like I said, the working mode's already set, self-consumption. And in the battery backup mode, we got that disabled. And in your battery settings, you know, this is all gonna be personal preference, how you wanna have everything set. Of course, uh, my battery's a, a, a lithium EG4, so that's all set. The battery charge controls is off the of state of charge. So, you know, you can set your state of charge limits. You can set your current amps, you know, and then I set mine to charge last, it's disabled, you know, cause I do want it to charge if there's extra power coming in from the solar, it's not being used by your loads. And then the battery discharge, of course, same thing, state of charge is where I got it set at. I got it set to hundred amps uh, discharge rate cause I have the one battery. I got my off grid cut off and the on grid cut off state of charge set for the battery. I got it set to 26 and 21. You can set that wherever you want to set it. It's just based on your personal preference, I guess. I don't really mind if the battery gets a little bit lower. I just don't want it to get super low. So if it gets down to, to like 20%, I do have it where it will charge back to 25. And we will see that on some of the other settings as we're looking through everything. Generator, I don't have a generator hooked up to it or really I haven't did anything with the settings. It's kind of just at default wherever it was set at. And then your, your grid stuff is gonna be set pretty much automatically anyway. Then you can also go to the advanced settings, which I don't think I did anything in here. But uh, the CTs, I think the EG4 Tech did set it to negative 40, trying to get it to be a little more accurate. And, you know, so if you, you wanna do that, you can probably do that as well. It makes it a little more sensitive, I guess. Let's go back to the, the first page. We're going out of the working mode and let's go into your basic settings under maintenance. Let's go to read and it's gonna read whatever your settings are. And we're gonna go ahead and go through those settings. So the common settings, of course, you can set all your time and all the other stuff at the top. And basically the CTs, you know, if you got it reversed, you know, you can, you know, enable that stuff at the top. So basically most of that stuff, you're not going to have to mess with. Then we're going to go into your application settings. So no batteries. Of course, I got that disabled. Power backup on this is enabled. Grid cell back is disabled. The fast zero export, I got it enabled. PVR disabled. Grid loss warning disabled. The normal standby, I got it in normal. Micro grid disabled. Uh, seam seamless EPS switching, I got it disabled. Off-grid mode disabled. Uh, RSD enabled. Then the shared batteries, I don't have any of that enabled. Grid connection, I, I didn't change anything with that. It's automated. Then the charge settings. I got it set like I was talking about. I got it set the state of charge because I got battery communications. Charge last is disabled. And battery backup mode is disabled. AC charge. Um, you can enable or disable that just depending on what you want to do. So right now this is saying disable, but I know I got this enabled. So I'm not sure if I changed that by accident, but basically if it gets down to 20%, as you can see, I got it set. It'll start AC charging and it'll go up to 25% cause I also don't want to get battery to get super low. So, you know, I, I'm guessing I'm going to have to enable this back somehow I must've disabled it. And then the backup battery mode, 
You got that uh, disabled on this one. Let's see, discharge settings. I got that set to, got the state of charge set, of course. And then you can just set that based on your personal preference, I guess, based on how many batteries you got, how low you want the state of charge to get, you know, the maximum you want to go to. You kind of just set those where you want it. Uh, forced discharge, I got that disabled. Peak shaving, I'm not doing that. Smart load, I'm not doing that. And the smart load, I think that's where it'll go back through the, your generator port and power loads. And I'd have to look up a little more about that. I haven't used that yet. And that's the basic settings. Let's go back to working mode again. Let's read this one more time to make sure nothing actually changed. I don't think I disabled anything when I was messing around here. Yep, still set to self-consumption, battery backup mode disabled. All that looks the same. This went back to the monitor page, and as you can see, got 2,585 at 11.49 a.m. You know, it's kind of been a cloudy day, but got 2,585 watts coming in. I think I have about six, uh, maybe 10 or 11 panels hooked up. You know, some of them just kind of laying on the ground. I just want to give my parents some power. And as you see, got 1,853 watts going into the battery, 681 power their loads on their house which is just the main panel. I don't have anything on their backup load panel yet. I didn't move any breakers over because I haven't hooked up all the solar and I just haven't finished the job completely. So once we get all the solar hooked up, I'm gonna start moving loads over that I wanna run on solar all the time. But as you see, it's just back feeding back from the uh, grid input on your inverter back to the actual loads on that main panel. So right now, you know, see, this consumption just went to 3,687. So I can see you got 2,597 coming from solar and then 1,229 coming from the grid. So they're basically both coming in to that panel to try to even out that load as much as possible with your solar. Because that's the whole goal is we're trying to use as much solar as possible to bring their bill down. My, one of my main goals is when they don't have power, so they have some power. But, you know, hey, they want to be able to save some money. Any way you can get somebody into solar, that's how you have to get them in. You know, I want people to have battery backups, of course, but if you're able to save some money at the same time, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. So if this is something you're looking at doing, you know, this is one way you can set it up. If you're doing a partial backup and not powering your entire panel, you know, because you're not gonna wanna sell back to the grid and all that, but you wanna have some backup. To me, this is one of the best ways to set it up. If you use a ton of power and that 12K is not gonna be enough output to power your whole house, it will never be able to power my whole parents' house. They got a bunch of stuff running. So never be able to power their house all the time. You know, like right now, they only got 4,000 watts coming out or whatever, but there's times they have a ton of power coming out, you know, more than 15,000 watts. So they would need two inverters. Of course, that's very expensive, you know, for two of those, unless you have enough room to put a bunch of solar out there and you can be able to actually use both of them for the solar. Their, their house and their yard are not gonna be big enough to put that much solar to have two of those inverters. So we'll try to get one to be able to save them some money and put up as many panels as possible. So that partial backup is one way, no matter how many panels you have, to have some battery backup if your power goes out and also be able to help out your loads. And if you're interested in the install I did at my parents' house, I got a little series, you can go check that out as well. I'll link it up above. And the way I was able to get this inverter, if you don't already know, is Signature Solar has the upgrade program and if you have some of their older EG4 inverters, like the 6000 or 6500, or if you have a GrowWatt 5000 ES and you bought it before 2024, you can upgrade by trading those in and get a significant discount. You can get the 18K for 3000. And depending on which inverter you're trading in, you can also get, like I got my three EG4 uh, 6000 XPs. These three are running my house. I turned them off right now. So, you know, they're not running right this second so I can make this video. But they pretty much run my house all the time, except when I'm doing testing and making videos. And they've been doing great, and I'm going to do an update on those as well. So I'll leave a link to the upgrade program below if you're interested in that. And I'll leave a link to all the equipment that I've used at my parents' house with the 18K. And so if you're interested, you can go click on any of those links. And also, if you want to buy anything and you want a discount, you can use discount code discount Rodney code. Hunt 50 my discount code did change. Signature Solar had to change up some of the discount codes. So if you're interested in that, hey, go check that out as well. You can get $50 off any order over $500. And right now, if you place an order, I think if it's anything over $2,000, you're gonna get free shipping. 
So you can get a deal right now. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, hey, go ahead and check them out. And I got a couple of videos popping up right here that you may be interested in. So go check those out as well. And thanks for watching.